Hey guys, it's X, and welcome back aboard the Cantina of the Hyperion, where we are chilling out with our old buddy Tychus, and a bunch of the other members of the crew who are all here to just have a drink, take a load off, and get their minds off the stress, the immense amount of stress that's being put on them. And we're actually joined by Tosh here today, and he doesn't really look like he's here to relax, does he? He's just standing there, hunched over with his arms pressed against the rail like that. It looks like he's trying to get a feel for everybody in the cantina. He's trying to size everybody up. Like, he's trying to leave no face unmemorized, no behavior unstudied. I mean, he was just aboard the bridge not too long ago, wasn't he? I get the impression that he's actually moving about the ship, trying to get a feel for everything in his surrounding. The ship's layout, the people in the ship, everybody's timings, like when they go on break, when they're actually on duty, what sets them off, what they do to relax, all kinds of things. He's trying to, he's trying to get as, as concrete a feel on his situation as possible, so he's in complete control. And he really doesn't seem like the type who would want to relax. Um, he plays it cool all the time, he really does. But uh, I get the impression that this is, this is the lifestyle that he's chosen. Like, he can't relax, ever. But he, th that doesn't really bother him. He likes that. In any case, <laughs> that's just my assessment of Tosh. As a recap, in our last mission, we were on Meinhof, and we were fending off wave upon wave of infested Zerg... Uh, sorry, infested Terrans who are infected by the Zerg virus that changes them into infested Terrans. And these Zerg, quote, zombies, unquote, which, because, you know, that mission was just a parody of a zombie game or a zombie movie. Uh, Tychus even actually at one point makes a comment about it. But these were the colonists that we actually rescued on Agria. A good number of them were infested, but a good number of them weren't. And that's why we were there, because Dr. Ariel Hansen requested that we go down and help out her people once again to rescue them. And apparently she's looking for a new place for them to take refuge. Because obviously Meinhof wasn't the place. In any case. What do you think of Dr. Hansen? She's a lovely thing. Full of honey, that one. At least, that's what she wants you to think. You think she's hiding something? You ever wonder why the Zerg hit our world so fast? Something there they want. Something made of honey, maybe. Buzzing little bees. <laughs> Cryptic as ever, Tosh. I don't know. Maybe Dr. Ariel Hansen is hiding something. Because, I don't know, see, <laughs> you're not sure if you can trust Tosh. I'm not sure if I can trust Tosh. But I get the feeling that he's really good at sizing people up and making very accurate judgments on who they are as a person. So I'm pretty sure he's already got his judgment. I'm pretty sure he's already got most of the people on this ship, including Dr. Ariel Hansen, pegged as far as their intentions, as far as who they are, as far as what they're going to be doing in the future, as far as where they've been in the past. I'm pretty sure he can make all those kinds of assessments in a split second just by looking at somebody. And studying people as he does right here, it seems to be that he's improving his ability to do so. And I actually really think that he's got a good feel for Dr. Ariel Hansen, but you don't know whether you can trust what he actually says. Like, he might already know what she's all about. He already, he already has his own assessment of her. But what he actually tells us about that, I don't know. You, you don't know if you can trust it. So, why don't we just go ask her? She's not here. Dr. Errol Hansen is actually not in the laboratory. But we do have another pointer here to the Zerg tank and the research console. So, let's go see what Stetman's been up to. And I'll read his log for you here. Stetman log, entry 2247. Recovered Zerg sample continues to evolve. Clearly has motor function despite the lack of anything like a neural cortex. It's giving off more heat than it could possibly be absorbing in that tank. I'm learning how some Zerg burrow so well. It's extremely sophisticated. They have billions of tiny muscles that vibrate at a low frequency, effectively loosening soil, crumbling rock, and snapping vegetation. They can swim through the ground. It's not as fast as running, but it's close. I can see a way to put this knowledge to good use. Okay, so Statman's been researching the Zerg based off of the Zerg research points that we've been pulling in from the missions that we've been playing. And you can see here that the sample that he's collected has actually begun to grow. And in his research, he's discovered how the Zerg actually burrow, and using that, he's able to develop technologies for us to use. You can see here, we've still only got four Protoss research points. But we have collected enough Zerg research points to get up to the second tier of Zerg research progress. So let's see what the two options we have here. The first option that we have is the Planetary Fortress, and as you can see, it places a very large dual cannon above the command center. It gives each command center the ability to be upgraded into a planetary fortress, which has these large cannons, and also vastly increases the armor and hit points. Ah, 
Actually, I don't know if it increases the hit points, but I know it vastly increases the armor of a command center, making it itself a very powerful defensive structure. You can see here it's holding off these hydrolisks with no problem. Um, the downside to this is that once you've upgraded any command center into a planetary fortress, that command center can no longer lift off because of the weight that the planetary fortress adds onto the command center. Our second option is the perdition turret. And this is what Stepman was talking about. You can see here that the turrets are actually burrowed. Well, they're not really burrowed, but they are concealed beneath the ground. By studying the Zerg's ability to burrow themselves, he's developed technology that lets, that lets these perdition turrets hide, just like the Zerg would, underground, until a threat is detected. And then they pop up out of surprise and destroy the threat. So, I don't know. Ah. Uh. I really gotta time these research opportunities better so that I can... I gotta start doing them at the end of a video instead of at the beginning of a video so that I can give you guys a choice to do it. I guess I'm gonna have to make another choice here on my own. And just like last time, I'm gonna edit in... I'm gonna take some time to think about it, and then I'm gonna edit in a cut so that you guys don't have to watch through that. But yeah, give me some... give me a little bit of time to think. Okay, we are back, and I have made the decision on which of these upgrades I want, and the one that we're going to be taking. It is... well, let me explain my thinking on these two. The Planetary Fortress. Uh, I'm going to be going with the Perdition Turret, and the reason I'm not going to be selecting the Planetary Fortress is because, in my opinion, although it does fit well with the theme that we've been going for, and that theme is a very aggressive defensive style, and by aggressive defensive I mean rather than choosing the fortified bunker, which we didn't choose last time, which increases the bunker's health, we chose the perdition, sorry, the shrike turret, which is, it gives some offensive ability to our defensive options. So, um, to me, that's a very aggressive defensive style. And yes, the planetary fortress definitely does fit that theme of being an aggressive defensive style. I mean, come on, it's just a giant shrike turret <laughs> atop our command center. But the reason I'm not going for it is because of the building that it modifies. I mean. If the enemy is getting close to our command centers anyway, our defenses have probably already been beaten. And it's sort of like a last line of defense, and probably not a situation you want to be in anyway. The goal is to keep the enemy away from the command center and the SCVs, so creating a structure as a last line, getting an upgrade that serves as a last line of defense is something you shouldn't be making too much use of at any rate. So. I've decided to go for the Perdition Turret, because it too fits with the aggressive defensive style that we've been going for here. Uh, and it fits very well, because it's something that you can lay in front of bunkers the way, you were, the way we were laying supply depots before, except these things can fight back while still tanking some damage. And they fight back very well, I mean, they're giant flame turrets. So, uh, yeah, I'd rather have a frontline upgrade than a last line upgrade. So we're going to be going with the Perdition Turret. And now that we have selected that, we will be moving out of the research console and out of the laboratory altogether. Let's go see where Dr. Ariel Hansen actually did end up. Ugh, I doubt she's in the armory. Okay, she's not in the armory. But uh, I did want to check out the armory for the extra console. Uh, sorry, check out the armory console for the extra upgrades that we've gained since the last mission. Never thought we'd be back on Meinhof again. Oh, we broke our backs trying to make a life on that rock. Kelmorian squeezing us dry. The day we rose up, we just couldn't take it anymore, you know? I feel you. Man's got a duty to stand up and be counted sometimes. Oh, hell, we were stupid. Having right on your side ain't no match for goss guns and combat walkers. A lot of folks died for nothing. If you hadn't shown up when you did... Hey, your people bought their own freedom. Paid for it in blood. Me and Matt, we were just glad to help. <laughs> so that gives you a little bit of the history between Raynor and Swan. I honestly and regrettably do not know a lot about the Kelmorians, but I do know the Kelmorians were a Terran race and they were oppressing Swan's people. So eventually Swan's people did rise up and decided to fight up against them in a rebellion. If Raynor and Matt hadn't come along, I presume with the Hyperion, I guess, I mean that's my guess, if they hadn't shown up, then I'm pretty sure Swan and all his people would have been killed. But Raynor's right. Raynor's giving Swan credit where it's due. And they decided to revolt before Raynor and Matt even showed up. So they definitely did pay for their freedom with their own blood. In any case, let's see what the armory console's got for us. I'm assuming we have no more infantry upgrades. No, we do not. And we're going to see a new tab here on the left side in the armory console for vehicles. And of course, it's the Hellion, the only vehicle that we've currently unlocked. And the two upgrades that we have for this are the twin-linked flamethrower 
and the thermite filaments. Let's see what the twin-linked flamethrower does. It doubles the width of the Hellion's flame attack. So you can see here, this single Hellion is able to take out two rows of these infested colonists. No problem. Two shots, two rows. Very nice. I'm pretty sure they were already weakened, though. And the thermite filaments, Hellions do an additional plus 10, sorry, plus 10 damage versus light armor. Ah, the blue flame upgrade. Ah, that's what it is casually called, the blue flame upgrade. I guess here it's called thermite filaments, but the official name for it, as far as multiplayer is concerned, and the one you're probably going to hear most often, well, the one you're probably going to hear most often is the blue flame upgrade for the Hellions, but it's actually called uh, the Infernal Pre-Igniter, and that increases the heat of the Hellions' flames and makes it deal more damage to light armored units. Uh, meaning it's fairly useless against heavier armor units like tanks and goliaths and things like that, so... I don't know. I don't really plan on making too much use of the Hellion anyway, honestly. It is a pretty cool unit, and it does have its uses. I myself am not good enough with my micro to actually make good use of Hellions. I might use them at some other point in the future, but I can't see any use for either of these two upgrades just yet. And our base defenses are about the same. The, the upgrade that I've been interested in as a secondary concern is the concussive shells for the Marauder. Uh, as just as a recap, the concussive shells slow incoming enemy units that they hit. And Marauders are a very powerful infantry unit, good against Protoss units and Terran mech units and the, heavily ar the more heavily armored Zerg units. So that is the upgrade I think I'm going to be purchasing here for our Marauder. I'm using 70,000 of our 145,000 credits. It's just good to have. Uh, it's this, it's a staple of many Terran strategies, so it's one that I'm going to be going for. In any case, case? <laughs> in any case. Well, Ariel, found a world for your people yet? Yes, an unclaimed planet called Haven. It's near the edge of Protoss space, but it seems safe enough. It'll have to do. Your people need to lay low for a while. Aren't either of you worried the colonists might be infested? How could you even suggest that? They're perfectly healthy. I hope so, Ariel. The Protoss don't mess around when it comes to infestation. Just in case, maybe you should start looking into some kind of cure for the Zerg virus. Conventional wisdom says a cure is impossible. The virus mutates too fast. But I'll look into it. Just do what you can. That's all anyone's asking. <laughs> so Ariel's chosen a world that's at the edge of Protoss space for a bunch of people who might be infested with the Zerg virus, or infected with the Zerg virus. In this case, I suppose we can use infested and infected interchangeably, but Rainer's right. The Zerg don't mess around when it comes to infestation, Zerg infestation. If the Protoss discover that Haven is being occupied by Terrans who could possibly be infected, they're going to burn up, and I mean the Protoss will burn up the, the entire planet of Haven to get rid of the virus. So it's not something we should take lightly, and that's what Matt is worried about. Matt's worried about any of the people being infected, and the Protoss actually seeking their uh, seeking to cure that planet by flame. Kerrigan's learning some new tricks. The infestation on Meinhof seemed particularly virulent. It's about the worst thing I can imagine. Losing who you are like that, all the while being slowly twisted into a damn monster. If any of Dr. Hansen's people on Haven are infested... I know. It's just a matter of time before the Protoss come looking for them. Still, I have a history with the Protoss. If it comes to that, maybe I can talk him down. <sighs> maybe. I'm working on a cure for the Zerg virus. I just hope my people won't need it. I don't know. Like Matt said, Kerrigan's learned some new tricks. We've got several transports. I suppose I'm going to guess, I'm going to assume, that those transports are currently in a small fleet with the Hyperion here. I don't imagine all of the colonists are actually aboard the ship. I'm pretty sure some of the more capable ones are aboard the ship, volunteering their help. But I'm fairly certain some of those transports that we saw at the end of the Meinhof mission are flying alongside the Hyperion as a fleet. And I don't know. If they're infested, it could be dangerous for everybody involved. In any case, let's hit up the star map and see which mission we're going to be going for next. Okay. Uh, and the last mission, at the end of the last mission, I gave you guys a choice between Belshir and Tarsonis. And almost, uh, 
almost unanimously. I mean, it's not really unanimously. I we got several votes for Tarsonis, but the vast majority of you wanted to go to Belshir, the Protoss world, uh, for numerous reasons. Number one, we've been fighting a lot of Zerg. Um, we fought a little bit of Terran here and there, although Tarsonis here because of the Dominion and not the Zerg. But uh, people wanted a break from the Zerg. Numbers, uh, number two, we wanted a break from the Zerg themselves and a break from the Zerg research points. And Tarsonis offers Zerg research points, but Belshir offers Protoss research points, and that's what we're going to be going after in particular on this mission. Um, another reason is some people like the Goliath that it offers. Some people just want to follow Tosh around because they think Tosh is pretty cool. A lot of different reasons for Belshir. Plus, Belshir is a beautiful planet, so uh, let's see what's actually going on in this mission. Just get another recap. There's a rare gas on Belshir, the Protoss skull, the breath of creation. They think it'd be a gift from their gods. <laughs> we call it Tarazine and it'd be worth a fortune to the right bidder. Of course, those Protoss will kill us if they catch us on their holy ground. Or, oh, at least they'll try. <laughs> the Goliath was a... Well, it's classified here as a heavy fire support unit, but it was very much not a... Well, I guess it technically was a support unit in Brood War. I guess it was supporting the siege tanks. But, yeah, it was a staple of Terran mech play in Brood War. And mech means mechanical units such as tanks, vultures, and Goliaths. They're basically like really souped up marines. They have a ground attack with these cannons that you see up front. So they use machine guns to fire at ground. But they've also got these rocket launchers that they use to attack air. And uh, that's what made them very important in Terran play in Brood War is the anti-air capabilities that they had. In any case, our objective here is to secure shares and gas on Belshir. We're going to be re rewarded 120,000 credits. And what's most interesting to me, the plus three Protoss research opportunities. So, uh, once again... Brutal difficulty. We're gonna go ahead and launch this and skip the cutscene. No, not the cutscene. Here we go. Much prettier than Redstone, yeah? I don't much like fighting Protoss if I can avoid it. Not just any old Protoss. Fanatics call the Tal Darim. They believe the Tarazin is sacred, a gift from the Zelnaga. If these Tal'Darim bring in their air power, they're gonna hammer us. Swan, get the Goliath schematics loaded at the factory. If their anti-air missiles are still any good, we might just pull this off. All right, cowboy. I'll get the Goliath schematics loaded so we can build more. How do we get to the Terrazine? See those altars? Tal'Darim mystic set them up to collect the Terrazine. We just need to grab it. Well... Our SCVs will be able to haul the Terrazine. We just gotta keep them protected. With any luck, we can pick up what we need before the Tal Darim find us. Alright, let's get to it. <laughs> I didn't mean I was gonna skip the cutscene, I meant I was gonna skip the loading screen. And we definitely are. <laughs> Here goes. And we're back. Not enough minerals. Okay. Let's see what we've got to start here. Only SCV 27 supply. Ready. Here are the coordinates for the Terrazine sites, brother. These should make our lives a little easier. Our SCVs can pick up Terrazine canisters and move them. It'll take them a while to disconnect the canister, so make sure you watch out for them. Okay, so apparently we've been given a freebie altar down here. Let's go make sure that's undefended. Yes, sir. And these are our goliaths. You can see they've got forward-mounted machine guns for attacking ground targets. And yes, this place is undefended. That being the case, we might as well begin harvesting it, because that is the objective of the map. And these goliaths also have those anti-air missile batteries that they use to attack aerial targets. And the goliath specialized as taking out aerial vehicles, which is pretty awesome, and we need to begin harvesting some more Vespine gas. Let's get some marines out, since we've got a surplus of minerals at the moment. We're going to defend our SCV with this small force. Almost enough resources for a Goliath. There we go. You got it. 
Not enough minerals. We've only got two harvesting from our refinery at the moment because I want to make sure we have as many minerals as we can get coming in. What's up? It's a good balance. I've got the first canister on hook, sir. I'll take it to the nearest command center. Good job. That's the first canister field. And the next one is probably going to be that one, which is closest. Incoming transmission. One of these three. This land was sacred to the Taldarim before Terrans ever reached the stars. You must depart immediately. Hold on now. We just need some of this gas here, and we'll be long gone before you know it. No. You shall not defile the breath of creation. Taldarim warriors, execute all those who would desecrate our altars. The Protoss are mobilizing, sir. Looks like they're gonna go after our SCVs when we harvest the Terrazine. I suggest we only harvest one side at a time and run with a heavy escort. Sounds good, Matt. I think we can do that. All right, so it's clear I'm gonna need some medics out. But I think we're doing a good job of keeping our resources low at the moment. Warning, the Taldarim are sealing off a Terrazine altar. The doctor is there. The Taldarim are sealing off the Terrazine altar so we can't get at them. If they keep it up, we won't be able to collect enough. That makes sense, doesn't it? SCV ready. Couldn't have imagined it was going to be that easy. Insufficient Vespine. The doctor is in. Additional Insufficient Vespine gas. Ah, more supply depots required. With the gear. Will do. Additional supply depots required. Alright, let's go stop him from sealing that. Oh, never mind. That's pretty much already done. So, that's a bad idea. We'll just hold back for the moment and macro up another, another round of units, I suppose. What's going on? There we go. This will this will work just fine. And I think I can afford one more SCV on gas so that I can start researching some upgrades. And just out of curiosity, I wonder if I can build an armory. I can build an armory. I'll build that later. I'll get marine upgrades first. And you know, since I've got so many minerals coming in, I think I've got the resources to support another barracks worth of production. I'm on it. And that won't have a warning. The Taldarim are sealing off a Terrazine altar. Gangway coming through. Alright, we'll bring some war pigs down. Take use of those make use of those mercenary contracts we've got. Ooh, look what we found. Protoss relic. That'll come next. Okay, let's go ahead and take these guys out too while we're here. Look at those rockets do their thing. Missiles, whatever. Alright, let's get some SCVs out here. Number one, to repair our damaged Goliaths. Ouch! Come back! Back to base, everybody! Looks like we've got some defense to do. Okay, now let's go. Harvest. Jeez. Standing by. And you know what? With this slight surplus of minerals, we're going to build some more of these defenses and put up a perdition turret for the fun of it. And you know what? Maybe a bunker as well. Not enough minerals. Warning. The Taldarim are sealing off a Terrazine altar. Before I begin harvesting, I'm actually going to go stop them from doing that. Take one of my units and grab this relic. There we go. Additional supply depots required. 
Okay, now since we're here, let's go ahead and begin. You no, know let's harvest from two places at once. Want a CV there? Want a CV here? Will you harvest it, please? There we go. Bold move, Mr. Reyna. Collecting terrazine from two places at once. Sure, it's going to be harder to keep the tall Darim off our backs, but the quicker we're done here, the sooner we can get off this rock. I hope that doesn't mean they double up their defenses. Additional supply depots. Come on. All right, so we've got our supply depots up finally. Warning: the Taldarim are sealing off a Terrazine altar. Sure. We'll go stop them from doing that. Our SCVs are going to come back home. I think they've got enough clear space, clear ground, to make it back with no problem. Let's go stop them from sealing off that particular altar, and let's get an armory built as well, so that we can begin getting some upgrades. Three down. You're doing great. Keep it up. Armed and ready. What's going on? Okay, here come the SCVs. Ah, go ahead. Whoa, 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 whoa. Bad news. What's going on? The doctor is Ow! <laughs> that sucked. All right, we'll let those SCPs do their thing and just repair for a little bit. No, we won't. We'll just... Ouch. Ha! Ah, Perdition turret for the win. All right, let's get some repairs done. Let's get some more units out. Armory is just finished. Let's get some more Vespine gas in here so that we can get this upgrade. Perfect. And because we're short on gas, we're going to build another refinery. Warning. The Taldarim are sealing off a Terrazine altar. What's going on? Big job. SCV ready. Let's go snag two of these at once. Armed. Who wants some? Is it critical? Incoming transmission. You shall not steal the breath of creation so easily. Careful. They're sending their ships to take out your SCVs. Shoot them down quick, or we're finished. It's alright, we, we'll be okay. Okay. So much going on in my head. <laughs> Can't macro properly. <laughs> Trying so hard. <laughs> That's over half the canisters you wanted. Who wants some? Okay. Go ahead. So that makes five of seven. I guess that one will be my next mark. You gonna give me orders? Wait, before we go out, see if we can yeah, let's bring some more war pigs down. Just to bolster our forces. Let's get our SCVs moving. Oh, looks like we have another attack force coming in. That's why it always pays to keep your eye on the minimap. Warning. The Taldarim are sealing off the Terrazine altar. I'll just have to let those go. Warning. The Taldarim are sealing off the Terrazine altar. Additional upgrade complete. Ouch! Okay. What do we lack? We lack vehicle armor. Vehicle plating. We'll let that upgrade. Additional supply depots required. We also lack supply depots, of course Additional we do. Supply depots required. It's vehicle plating upgrade. Damn those Taldarim. Every altar they shut down sets us back further. You need to get some of your boys out there and stop them. What's up? Looks like we're charging into a base. In 
insufficient, thus being gas. Hope we don't run into any more Colossi or uh, High Templar. This army is heavy bio. Jeez, more defenses? Come on! Are off the altar. What's going on? All these are already sealed off. Our best hopes are these two. We've got one SCV with us. So I guess we'll just harvest this far one first. And hope we don't get attacked back at home. Those guys meeting up. Okay, so we've got pretty much all the upgrades we can get. We gotta slow the tall drain down, son. They've sealed off five geysers already. The doctor is in. It's okay. There's a research point right there. I don't see any clear way to be able to get to it though. And I've got way too much else going on in my head. I might have to just skip it. I don't really want to, but I might have to. Upgrade complete. The doctor is in. Ready. Okay, SCV. You got that? Good. Let's just get you home. Standing by. Everybody get home. Just follow that SCV. Make sure you stay safe. Alright. And then that last altar will be our next goal. Warning. The Taldarim are sealing off a Terrazine altar. Yep, this better be good. Base is under attack. You and your radar sure can walk the walk. We just need one more canister. Okay, let's get back. Protect these SCVs that are already en route here. In the rear with the gear. Got one SCV doing nothing, that's okay, I guess. Armed and ready. What's going okay, begin harvesting. This will be the last canister. And what I think I'll do. This ain't good. If the Tall Dream seal off any more Terrazine, there won't be enough left for us. It's okay. These reckless Terrans must be stopped. Slay them all. I don't like the sound of that at all. Our SCVs are under attack. Okay. Jeez, they really are pushing very hard for this. And I hope that SCV can make it. Let's go try and get that research point over here. I'm actually not escorting him, hoping he can make it back on his own. Ooh, a warp prism. You don't see many of those. Don't turn it in yet, SCV. Oh, he turned it in. Our SCVs oh, wait, did he? Are under attack. That's fine. Oh, we need one more. Terrazine. Where's that last altar? We've got six of seven. Oh, wait, he didn't turn it in yet. Good. I thought he did it automatically. Let's hold him back here and go find that last... Well, everybody stay together. Let's go find that last Protoss research point. And I've got a lot of minerals. Ah, they're coming for me from behind. Okay, everybody met up. Just stay back there, man, with your- Ow! Let's just walk inch by inch into the fog of war until we find that freaking canister. High ground right here. 
Vespian guys are exhausted. Ouch! We found another base. Oh, there it is. Let's just go grab that really quickly. That's all three of those. We'll take out this base. Actually, that, if that's the objective, let's just go turn in this last thing and hopefully that's it. My god, this mission was so hectic. <sighs> Please let that be it. <sighs> that's the last canister. I think we've outstayed our welcome, boys. <sighs> These brutal missions are getting more and more brutal. There was so much going on in my head in that mission. Having to defend the SCVs, having to make sure the altars don't get taken down, having to keep your macro going, trying to get upgrades at the same time. Ugh! That made my head hurt. <laughs> that almost makes me want to play multiplayer as Terran. Because if I can do all that, <laughs> I should be able to handle a, a platinum opponent, I think. We didn't get any of the... Well... We got one objective, but I must have gotten that one last year uh, when I played this the first time. In any case, here's the score screen. I'm going to let you guys read that. Well, you can pause to read it if you want. Sir. I received an encrypted transmission from an untraceable source. It claims that Tosh here was part of a classified operation called Project Shadowblade. They used Jorium and Terrazine to enhance ghost powers. It's true. We are called Spectres. Next generation ghosts. And you were gonna tell me all this when? We all have our secrets, Mr. Rena. Doesn't mean I'm any threat to you. Maybe not. But whoever sent this message could be. Matt, any way to verify the transmission? No, sir. But it does end with... I'll be in touch soon. It's Minsk. Trying to turn us against each other. Don't let him. I'll let it lie for now. At least till I find out who sent this transmission. But I'll be keeping an eye on you, Tosh. You can try. New mercenaries, Spartan Company, new research project, Ultra Capacitors, new research project, uh, Vanadium Plating, I believe that said. The text was kind of like blue on black background, so kind of difficult to read. New research unlocked. Still don't trust me, brother. Until you decide, eat nothing to discuss. That Tosh is a whack job, Jimmy. Spends all his time muttering and playing around with those damn dolls of his. Well, I need someone to balance out your sophistication and good manners. The guy ain't riding ahead, brother. I can appreciate some good honest craziness, but that guy, he's got something broke inside. Well, let's get away from all that drama for a bit and go see Swan. So, we're pirates ourselves these days. Hey, Kaczynski, got any rum? Arr. <laughs> let's see what the Armory Console has for us. Normally I would do this at the beginning of a video, but because that mission was so short, let's just go take a look at what we've got for our vehicles. New Goliath upgrades. Multi-lock weapon system. Goliaths can fire at air and ground units simultaneously. Or the Ares class targeting system. Wait. Okay, multi-lock weapon system and the Ares class targeting system. Goliath's gain plus three missile range and plus one cannon range. We'll look a little more into those at the beginning of the next video. I just want to skim through some of this stuff right now and talk to some of the characters. I've run a few tests on the terrazine gas like you asked. It's clearly related to Vespine gas, but there are some very exotic organics added into the mix. Any guesses what it's used for? Well, it would definitely affect brain chemistry, so it could be used as some kind of drug or stimulant, I suppose. 
drugs, huh? That's just wonderful. <laughs> Rainer doesn't even know what he's getting into half the time. The Protoss tank. Uh, let's go ahead and read it. So, here we have our first bit of Protoss research, since we've collected enough of the Protoss research points for Stetman to actually do something with. Stetman Log, Entry 2142. The crystal is growing, and it appears to have something... some sort of antimatter? Gravitational anomaly? Non-standard phenomenon? Hovering over it. I am now convinced that the crystal is drawing power from the ship, but in ways so subtle as to be undetectable. Then how did you detect it? <laughs> it is non-organic, but has a molecular structure as diverse and complex as any organisms. It's developed an intricate matrix that makes it tough and surprisingly flexible. An alloy based on this crystal would have impressive damage mitigation. The structure of this matrix also suggests some sort of energy storage system. There might be something to this. The protests are so far beyond us. We must seem amoeboid to them. Alright. So let's see what he's found. He's found... Uh, gravitational anomalies. Some hovering capability. And he's also found... He's also studied this technology to the point where he's found something that he might be able to use to make an alloy. A new type of alloy. So let's see what the research console has for us. Alright, our Zerg research stays at Tier 2, and we're at the first tier of Protoss research. Ultra Capacitors, weapon upgrades in the armory and engineering bay, increase attack speed by 5% in addition to increasing damage. Alright, that sounds kind of cool, because as you just saw in the last mission, I made full use of upgrades. So now, being a, uh, while also upgrading the damage output that, the, that my units deal, it'll also increase their attack speed, thus furthering their damage output. And there's also Vanadium Plating. Armor upgrades in the armory and engineering bay increase life by 5% in addition to increasing armor. So, the armor upgrades that we get from the engineering bay and the armory also increase the durability of our units even further because it increases their HP totals. Huh. That is incredibly interesting. Honestly, I could go either way with this. So again, I'm going to put it up to a vote for you guys. We're going to see which which ones you want to get. The ultra capacitors for the extra offensive power for our units, or the vanadium plating for the extra defensive power for our units. Now, a couple of things to consider when making your decision. The Ultra Capacitors will increase the offensive capability of my standing army. which, And uh, as you can see, our previous uh, strategies have been to have our base somewhat defend itself with defensive structures, with an aggressive defensive style, and the army goes out and does what it's got to do on the map. So. Ultra Capacitors will help the army accomplish that by being able to take the units out a lot faster, and it doesn't really defend, uh, contribute much to our base defense, for the most part, with the way that we play. Although any units in the base, of course, will benefit from the uh, the extra attacks power. attack power. And the Vanadium Plating, again, remember, this, uh, this is a benefit to our standing army, which is going to be out on the map most of the time, or maybe even in bunkers uh, back at home. Uh, the Vanadium Plating will help our army survive longer out there, which will give a bonus, not really a bonus, but lend more weight to units like medics and SCVs out in the field, which are helping to repair my units. So consider those two things, uh, and leave me a vote in the comments with what you would like. I'll read through them and see which one we're going to pick up. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and close this off for now. I finally get to let you guys pick a research decision. That's cool. I wanted to, I've been wanting to do that for a while, but with the way that I've been uh, structuring my videos, it always ends up that I'm in the laboratory at the beginning of the video rather than, rather than at the end. So, yeah, go ahead and choose that. Um, make your choice there, and let's go see what's going on on the bridge, because there might be another choice between missions. What do you make of that encrypted message, Matt? I honestly don't know, sir. If Tosh really is one of these specters, it's clear Mengsk would try to ruin your partnership. But Tosh isn't telling us everything. If we're going to win this revolution... I know. We have to be sure of our allies. Let's check out the star map. Okay, two missions. Tarsonis, which is the one we skipped out on for this one in the uh, in this particular video. Uh, so Tarsonis, let's go ahead and go for a recap. This is going to be the trains that we're going to have to hijack. That uh, It's the mission that Matt Horner lined up for us. We'll let him tell you what it is again. We've received reports of a new Dominion salvage operation on Tarsonis. They're running a large number of supply trains with minimal security. If we intercept the trains and liberate their contents before they can be shipped off-world, we could make a serious profit. Sounds good, Matt. Thank you. 
The rewards here are plus 3 Zerg Research, 110,000 credits, and we will open up the Diamondback, which is a tank hunter unit and can actually fire while moving. That's pretty unique. And now we've also got Zill. The tooltip here suggests that, that Zill was scoured of life of all life long ago. Excavated ruins suggest that the planet's ingenious, sorry, indigenous alien culture was wiped out virtually overnight. Alright, let's see what this is about. Mobius wants us to go after another artifact on some dead world called Zill. Apparently they sent in a specialist team, but they lost contact with them two days ago. Their bad luck, I guess. Figure we'll get hazard pay for this one. <laughs> Sounds good, Tychus. 120,000 credit reward and plus three Protoss research. Remember, we are behind on Protoss research. And something that's most interesting to me is that we open up the siege tank with the Zill mission. So we've got a choice between Tarsonis and Zill. Um, my vote, if you guys want to know personally, I would like to go for Zill, but I will count the votes and I'll decide whatever you guys want to go with. But I'm going to—I'm not going to lie. I am going to give a little bit of extra weight to my desire to open up the siege tank, which is a very powerful unit. It's probably my favorite Terran unit. Um, <laughs> so that's kind of hope—that's kind of me asking you guys to vote for Zill as well. <laughs> but again, I will go what the vast majority of people want to do: Tarsonis or Zill, and we'll go with that for the next mission. All right. So I think that's a great place to end the video here on the bridge of the Hyperion, and uh, yeah, I think that covers it. Thanks a lot for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.